So CPM on the RC 2014 revisited. Uh, so I've already done a previous video on CPM on the RC 2014. Um, this was, uh, it used a banked RAM and ROM board. Um, it was based on a design by Grant Searle. So what we could have is we could have 64K of RAM, and I think you could have like 16K of ROM. Um, now this design required storage, And I believe I demonstrated both using a compact flash or a floppy. And that was a great design. I had lots of fun with that design. Um, when I built my uh, Zeta 2 uh, single board computer, I found another design uh, which used some different, slightly different approach. I mean, it's the same basic idea with banking, uh, but we're using much larger chips, using 512K of RAM and 512K of flash. And so this uh, was based on Sergei Kiselyev's design for the Zeta 2. Uh, there's some advantages to this. We can put all of CPM on flash and then no floppy or compact flash needed. And then we also get RAM and ROM disks. Uh, so I decided to build a module for the RC2014 that would implement that type of bank switching. So what the Zeta 2 had is it had a 512K of RAM and 512K of flash ROM. So the RAM is here and then the flash ROM is over here. So the RAM is using an AS6C4008 chip and the flash ROM is a 39SF040. Um, one of the nice things about flash ROM is unlike an EEPROM, uh, you don't have to erase it in your UV eraser. Uh, you can just reprogram right over the top of it so that kind of saves a step. So by having each one of these be 512K, we have a lot of uh, additional room. Our Z80 can still only address 64K. Uh, but all this extra space we can use as a RAM disk and as a ROM disk. So this design allows you to incorporate a ROM disk with all of your common CPM programs and the CPM uh, BIOS and everything uh, built into the ROM. So you can operate the RC2014 without a floppy disk. Um, all of your programs like MBASIC and uh, the editor and uh, the stat utility, all that will be in this ROM disk. Uh, the RAM disk gives you some space if you want to uh, build programs locally. For example, you use X modem to download something to RAM and then uh, run it in the RAM disk. So that's quite a nice design because it can get you up and running without having to add a storage device. Um, it also boots very quickly and we have sort of a robust uh, set of software installed. So the way this works is it has a couple of register files down here set up for memory paging. So we want to divide our 64K of Z80 address space in four banks. Each bank will be 16K. Um, to get that addressing, we can take the top two address lines, that's A14 and A15. Uh, those two bits um, control which 16K of window we're in. Uh, and then we will take those two bits, we'll run them down to these two register files. Now these uh, register files they have separate um, read and write uh, functionality in them. So we can um, write them based on uh, these two address lines, A0 and A1, and these data bits on this side, but we will read them via A14 and 15 and get the, uh, the read output on that side. Okay, so let's uh, try to figure out how this memory paging works. It's gonna use those two register files. Um, First, we're going to start with uh, the two uh, those two bits of the upper address lines A15, A14, window. Uh, let's see, zero 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 one one zero one one. 
and these will point to various uh, windows in the Z80's address space. So we will have 0, 0, 0, 3FF, F, and then we have 4, So that's your standard Z80 address space, divided into four chunks, each 16K in size. So 00, zero you get the first block, zero, 01, you get the second, etc. So in a normal system, that would just access different uh, parts of RAM. But we're going to use this bank register, uh, those two chips in the uh, schematic, to give us a level of indirection. So what we will be able to do is load into the bank register um, some bits, and let's say if we put in it's only a seven bit register the way uh, it was designed. So if all seven bits are zero, that's going to be ROM page zero. And then if uh, we had zero, 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 one, ROM page one. Now if we change this bank register, Let's see, we go to one, zero. Then instead of ROM page zero, it'd point to ROM page two. Um, now let's say we wanted to make this one down here point to the RAM, then what we would put in there is a Put in there, we would put zero, one zero, RAM page zero, um, we'll do zero one zero, oh 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 one, so these, uh, these two bits here controlling the chip, these five lower bits are controlling the uh, block of chip. So by putting different values in these bank registers we can make these windows on the Z80 point to any arbitrary place in the, uh, the RAM and the ROM. And that will allow us to do those RAM and ROM disks. So, for example, you know, if you wanted to, you could page this one out and put your RAM disk in there, read a block from it, page in a different uh, block in your RAM disk, read in a different block, etc. You can access the entire 512K of either of those chips through these four windows of the address space. So, let's go back to the schematic and we can see how that is implemented. So those uh, register files are implemented by these two chips here. They're 74 HCT uh, 670s. They're four bits each, so it takes two chips. Um, the first chip does the first four um, bits. Uh, the second chip does the last um, three bits. And then there's um, a fourth bit on this that just isn't used. So these bits form address lines MA14, 15, 16, 17, and 18 that go directly to the RAM and ROM chips. And then these additional two lines over here are broken out to a decoder which will select a chip select based on those bits. So that was the lower five bits of the bank register addressing into the chip. And then the next two bits uh, forming the chip select. So what we will do is we will put these two registers on a chip select of their own. That's this page right uh, bit here. And we will hook that up to some address decoding logic. So when you write um, to address 70 or 78, it will cause whatever bits you wrote to get stored in these two register files. Now when we boot this thing up, we need all of this to be initialized to all zeros in those bank selects. 
so that it starts reading from the ROM chip instead of you know reading some arbitrary chunk of uninitialized RAM. And that is what this uh, flip-flop over here is for. So there's a flip-flop. It's called the page enable flip-flop. And it is hooked up to its own IO address to code. So a different address for page enable. I think it goes at like uh, 7C or something like that. Uh, so when you write a bit to that flip-flop, it will enable these two uh, chips to output. Uh, before a bit is written to that flip-flop, um, these outputs will all be pulled down to ground, so they'll all be pulled down to zeros. So it's also hooked up to uh, reset, so that when reset occurs, it clears the flip-flop, disables uh, the two bank registers, the resistors will again pull it all down, and we will have everything set to uh, all zeros, uh, addressing us into the first bank of the ROM. So that's sort of our power on reset condition so that we start in ROM. So here was my original uh, banked RAM and ROM module. You've seen this one in the previous video. It had uh, two 32K static RAMs, and it had this uh, 64K um, EEPROM, which is, has the window covered up with a piece of tape. Uh, so here, for comparison, is the new board. Um, this one has the 512K static RAM down here, 512K flash ROM up there, over here is the uh, decoding logic, um, a couple of 74 HDT 138s. This would be the uh, flip-flop that's used to enable the banking, and these would be the two uh, register files, the 74 HDT 670s, along with two um, resistor networks to pull all of those outputs down uh, when paging is not enabled. Um, so you can see the two boards about the same size. Now the uh, the ROM chip. Sometimes you get tired of uh, getting out the chip extractor and plugging that in and out. So I did rig up something, this kind of ugly uh, thing here, which is a ZIF socket. ZIF stands for Zero Insertion Force. Uh, and I made kind of a right angle adapter to it by taking a couple of 32 pin sockets and some um, wire, soldering them and putting some hot melt glue so it doesn't stick. But what this allows me to do, plug this together. Make sure it's all seated in there good. And now what we can do when we want to uh, reprogram the memory, just use your ZIF socket, put this in the top, clamp it down, see the chips in there, want to reprogram it, take it out. It's a nice thing about a uh, ZIF socket. Uh, so I use that, I put that in because it took me a lot of reprogramming to get the, uh, the ROM uh, built properly for my uh, RC2014. So my RC2014 has undergone some improvements as of late, so I built a case. Uh, you can see it mounted in the case here. Uh, this is uh, made out of acrylic. I had it uh, laser cut at Pinoco from a design of my own. Um, I've added a vacuum fluorescent display up here in the front. This is a four line by 40 character vacuum fluorescent display. Um, we have a three and a half inch floppy. Uh, mounted inside the case. You can kind of see it from the back. Uh, I didn't kind of when I designed it intended it to be flush but uh, didn't quite fit my case so it sticks out a little bit. Um, what else is there to see? The VFD driver board is here. Um, my floppy controller covered that in a previous video is there. Um, here is my uh, bus supervisor board. Um, using that basically just as a clock. I've got my CPU board here. My uh, SIO2 board is there. I do have a module here. This is an FTDI module um, serial to a USB so I can just plug a, a mini USB into the back of this for my console. And now let's take our um, so let's take the, uh, the new banked uh, RAM and flash ROM we will plug it into there, and we're ready to go. 
Okay, so let's assume we've downloaded ROM WBW. Um, in this case, we downloaded it from my uh, fork, which is at my GitHub repo, which has my custom changes for the RC2014. Um, go into the source directory. Look in here, there's a bunch of build scripts. If we run build.cmd, this is the one that runs the, all of the other scripts, so we'll run it. Um, so you'll get these security warnings, you just say run the script. Um, so, and then it bombs out with this Texify is not recognized. I think this is because I'm missing uh, something that it needs probably to do with LaTeX in generating the documentation. So what I did, type build.cmd. Look at build.cmd. It runs all these other uh, scripts, so I just run them all. Build hardware.cmd. Then the next one is build images. Build images.cmd. Every time it asks you to run something, you just say, yeah, run it. This is building some kind of floppy and hard drive images. I don't know if these are necessary or not, but I went through all of the steps just to make sure that the, the ROMs would fully build for me. So there's a couple more commands we need to run. So we did build hardware, build images. Let's do build shared. CMD. And then we will run build. Well, what else was there? Uh, build BP. And then finally, uh, build rom.cmd is the one that is actually going to build the rom image for us. So we'll run that. R. Uh, it's going to ask us for a platform. So these are different types of single board computers that rom WBW supports. I've named uh, the build for the uh, RC2014 uh, that I've assembled SMB. And then there's some configurations. Right now, the STD configuration. Um, that one has support for the SIO2 and the, the vacuum fluorescent display. That's the one I've been uh, using in the demo. So let's do uh, STD for standard. And right now it's compiling all the assembly um, and it's built the ROM image. So we have to figure out where these ROMs are at. I think it puts them... Yeah, it's in this binary directory. So if we look at dot dot slash binary we'll see that it's built uh, smb underscore std dot rom and that is the image that we're going to want to burn to our uh, flash rom chip so the programmer that I'm using is called uh, mini pro um, I've already selected the 39 sfo 40 rom uh, what we need to do now is we need to uh, load the proper uh, rom file into it so if we look down here we have some images we want smbstd.rom uh, it's binary format uh, we can see here it's loaded the ROM into its buffer looking through here we can see all the stuff that makes up the ROM okay so take the ROM out of the RC2014 insert it into the programmer close the zip latch now we're ready to program so we'll do device program and then we'll hit the program button
Okay, so it's done. Now we actually hit the cancel button when we're all done. Um, so now we have programmed the ROM. Taking the ROM out of the programmer, put it in the RC2014, and close the zip latch. Okay, so let's start our live demo now. I've got the RC2014 hooked up. I've got my serial console hooked up to the back. My uh, ROM is installed, the very same ROM we just burned. Uh, let's uh, turn it on. So the way I currently have this hooked up, the uh, vacuum fluorescent display mirrors exactly what's shown on the um, terminal. So whatever we see uh, over here in the terminal, we also see over here on the VFD. The VFD is only four lines long. It's a little bit uh, more convenient to use the uh, terminal to see what's going on. So let's uh, boot into CPM. Let's boot into CPM. So there we are in CPM. Now if you watch my Zeta 2 uh, demo, this is going to look exactly like the Zeta 2 since it's the same ROM image. So we're we're starting out on a ROM disk, that's drive B. Um, it has lots of files installed, so for example, mbasic is Microsoft Basic, 10, print, hello world, go to 10. You know, there's Microsoft Basic working as expected. There's also a bunch of other commands on here, like there's stat, survey, Uh, let's see what else. Uh, drive A is a RAM disk, so if we look at Drive A, it's currently empty. Uh, no file there. Uh, we can use pip um, a colon m basic dot com equals b colon. This will copy file from the ROM disk to the RAM disk. Now, if you a colon m basic dot com is there, um, showing stat, you know we can see. Um, drive A, the uh, RAM disk, lots of free space. Drive B, the ROM disk, uh, not so much free space because it has all those files installed on it. Um, I also have my uh, WD37C65 floppy controllers installed. See the cable there going to the floppy. Floppy drive protrudes out the back of my case. So if I take a floppy, insert it, clear dir. Um, so actually drive C will be the first floppy drive. So yes, so clear drive C. And then we can do a pip C colon M basic dot com equals B colon M basic dot com. Now if we do a stat, we will see well, it's still just showing the, those two drives, but I think we stat C colon. Uh, yeah, it does tell us about C. C is a 1.4 megabyte floppy, so it's got about 1390K free on it. Uh, dir C colon mbasic.com is there. We went over to the floppy. We could run mbasic from the floppy. So, yeah, floppy's working as expected. Uh, let's go back to the ROM drive. Do my standard demo of uh, running Zork X modem. Download it to the uh, floppy uh, Zork2.com and then transfer. Send X modem. That's uh, not the right. There we go. Zork uh, Zork2.com. And let's X modem Zork two dot dat R X zero transfer send X modem. It's a much less this is a much larger file, so we will see um, it will have a couple of disk flushes involved usually about one-third and two-thirds the way through. 
as usual, there's some of these errors while it's waiting for the, uh, well, it's timeout waiting for it to get started. Here it's kicked off. It's our first disc flush. Second disc flush. Final disc flush. So drive C, we've now got M basic as well as Zork. Again, this is our uh, floppy drive, so let's uh, load Zork. say it didn't warn us. We are good. So, you know, although I did this demo with the floppy drive, we could have easily downloaded this stuff to the RAM drive uh, instead. Um, the only difference is for the RC2014 board, I've designed the RAM drive. It is volatile, so as soon as you shut off power, your RAM drive would be gone. Floppy drive is, of course, persistent. But for people wanting to build a simple CPM computer, um, you can convert an RC2014 over to this build relatively easily because it's just two boards that need to be changed. Uh, the RAM and flash ROM board and the serial I.O. board. Okay, so finally I wanted to show one last thing and that is this uh, keyboard that I uh, put together here. This is a kit that came from uh, Spencer in, uh, in the UK, the RC2014 guy, and it is a universal micro keyboard. Uh, Spencer sells these in three different configurations. There's a version that is a parallel keyboard, a version that's a serial keyboard, and a version that's a USB keyboard. I opted for the uh, serial version so I can plug it into the RC2014 serial port um, via this uh, cable here. It's just three pins. It's a uh, five volt ground and uh, serial data out. See, it's composed of micro switches. There's one for each number, one's for the letters. There's a, uh, a couple of shift keys and an enter key and a space key. I'm told this is a ZX81 uh, layout, though I've never used a ZX Spectrum, so I wouldn't uh, be familiar with that. But it should reproduce most of the keys that we need to use the RC2014. So I will unplug the internal serial port plug in the keyboard then let's turn the RC2014 on there we're at the boot prompt so we can hit uh, C do simple commands like D I R get a directory and there it flies by we could run M B a S I C Microsoft Basic. And there we're running basic, so we could you know type in a simple program if we wanted to. S Y S T E M. Leave basic. Uh, so these uh, shift keys, let me see if I can figure out. I want to find the one that does a colon. Good luck with that. There's colon, so SSZ is colon. So remember that. 
So let's try going to C and then colon. Did I not say S? Whoops. Didn't want two of them. Let's try that again. C colon. I think if you knew the ZX Spectrum uh, keyboard layout, this would be a lot easier. Now we should still have Zork on here. Yeah, so let's do a Zork. Where was the O? O R K 2. Yeah, so it's not really all that usable on a four line display, but I mean we can still do stuff. Take the lantern. Go south, where's the U? T. Yeah, so uh, let me quit. Q. U I T. Yes, I want to quit. So yeah, I think this little keyboard is is kind of neat. There's also on uh, Spencer's uh, website there's an overlay that you can print out and a uh, layouts for a case that you could get fabricated, turn it into something a little bit more user friendly. You know, with the actual symbols printed where you could see them a little better. Uh, but this does, you know, it makes it so you can kind of turn your RC2014 into a little uh, standalone computer. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.